Well, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has called for an early election to occur on September 20th, 2021. This election will occur during the COVID-19 pandemic. Currently, party leaders are campaigning across Canada in hopes of being re-elected. To discuss the Liberal Party's campaign as well as their own election, we are joined today by Liberal MP candidate Ruby Sahota. Hi, Ruby. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, uh, it's my pleasure uh, to join and thank you for having me on. Oh, you're welcome. It must be very busy right now with your campaign. Uh, as you were mentioning earlier, you're out on the streets until uh, from dusk till dawn, basically braving the heat and the humidity. So we're very happy to have you today. Yeah, absolutely. And this gives me a little bit of a chance to get inside in some air conditioning for a little bit. But uh, we have our running shoes on, that's for sure. And we're hitting those doors. So as the incumbent from uh, Brampton North, how has your campaign kickoff been in this election? Yeah, we, we actually had an official campaign launch uh, just last Saturday, and it was, uh, I would say, quite a success. Uh, my, a lot of support, a lot of local people in the community uh, showed up, and uh, I appreciate that. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart for giving me so much love and respect over the years. Uh, so things have been going well, I, I will say, uh, due to COVID. Of course, we all of our teams are, you know, are trying to do our best to uh, enforce and make sure mask mandates are adhered to, uh, mm -hmm. that our volunteers are well trained on protocols uh, as they're hitting the doors that they step away from the door wear a mask uh, and have a conversation at a distance if that person is willing to and I thought that you know launching this campaign it was going to be very difficult uh, because of the the given pandemic but people have been very receptive and very open to having conversations which has shocked me a little bit um, I know they have been previously but I also feel maybe due to the pandemic a lot of people haven't been able to have that engagement with their local members that they're used to seeing where we go into community events or um or they feel comfortable coming to our office whenever they like uh you know our office was really open by appointment only for a little while and and now we're fully open for walk-ins again uh but during that time i think people felt like that uh, there was some disconnect and so they're really happy to see us at the doors they want to share um, their issues and feedback with us so uh, people have been very receptive um, and you have been the Liberal MP for Brampton North for the last two terms and based excellent performance that you've earned uh, how come you that you will be voted in for a third term yeah, well, that, that really is up to the people of Brampton North. All I can say and all I have in my power is to make sure that I continue to work hard, uh, continue to make sure that I'm an accessible MP. That has always been my my motto, uh, my, you know, when people ask you what, you know, what do you want to achieve? I want to leave behind a, a reputation and a legacy that, you know, the, me as being the member of parliament here or as your liberal candidate uh, that you can approach me uh, that you can share with me some of your most difficult issues and stories a lot of times when people come to our office they're sharing personal information and stuff that is quite difficult for them and that they need help in uh, otherwise you know happy people or people with no problems generally don't show up at their MP office. So, you know, I, I've always prided myself and made sure that anyone who wants a meeting or a phone call does get one from me. And, and that's going to be my goal in the years to come as well. So hopefully the people of Brampton are responsive to that and uh, they elect me to be their member of parliament for a third term, but only uh, time will tell on September 20th when people you know place their ballot in the ballot box. What kind of changes did you implement while in office for your riding? Well, we've made more investments than any other government in affordable housing uh, in the region of Peel. That's very important because our housing wait list is uh, quite long and people who've had to deal with the situation know that it is many, many, many years that you have to wait. And by that time, you know, you don't know whether the person is going to be in the same situation. Um, uh, on top of that, uh, infrastructure spending has also been, you know, very good. We are going to see a transition of our entire fleet of buses in Brampton pretty much turned into electric buses uh, thanks to the investment uh, through the Federal Infrastructure Bank. Uh, we've been working very close with our municipal counterparts and that's really important because all the city planning happens under them. So if they have a good partner at the federal level, we're able to get projects uh, put forward. But if they don't, 
uh, you don't see advancement. And I think there's a lot that the city wants to see for Brampton. Mm -hmm. There's a big vision. We invested in the Riverwalk project. With that, you'll be able to build up Brampton since it's on a flood plain, plain and have more of a downtown core. Um, and also, you know, throughout this election now, you're hearing about the big issues that people are concerned about. And that really is affordability, the environment. So all our all of the investments we've been making over the years have been targeted and focused in that direction to try to help solve that issue that we know that we are having. And even our platform, as it's all rolling out, mm -hmm. uh, announcement after announcement that you're hearing is also focused in that area. We think we're at a really crucial time after this pandemic. We want to make sure we can pivot and grow our economy, create more jobs. And that's very important to Bramptonians. Bramptonians have for a long time felt that this was a bedroom community and a place that they didn't work or go out for entertainment or, or school, that it was a place that they just lived and they went elsewhere for all of that. So um, I, along with my other liberal teammates and uh, of course the municipal government here are really looking forward to changing that uh, and we have made great uh, bounds in that area but we want to make um, we want to do a lot more uh, in the years to come yeah and just building off that if re-elected what kind of changes or policies can the people in your riding expect well, uh, a hot topic that I'm hearing uh, at the doors every day now is housing, housing affordability. Mm -hmm. Can my child ever afford to be in their own home? Uh, there's a lot of worry about that. They want to make sure their children's futures are secured. So you've heard a really comprehensive announcement from uh, our prime minister yesterday, our liberal leader, uh, Justin Trudeau, about housing affordability. And we're going to tackle it um, on three different fronts. And one is uh, a really important one, the Bill of Rights that uh, in buyers will have, which they don't have at this time. Right now, there's a lot of blind bidding, uh, very a lack of transparency in the real estate market. So we're going to criminalize uh, blind bidding. We're also going to make um, add an additional tax for those that flip homes within 12 months. That's also adding to uh, the cost of homes going up. So people who treat homes as a commodity alone uh, ban foreign buyers from buying for the next two years until we can come up with, with a very long-term solution that works. Mm. Um, and there's much more. You, there's going to be a tax-free savings account for people under 40 where they can save for a down payment. There's going to be a rent-to-buy program also uh, created uh, that people can enter into. And, and as you've heard, um, today as well. Uh, banks have benefited during this pandemic when many people have not. So we're going to tax um, our banking sector and our uh, insurance sector just a little bit more so that they're also contributing to the recovery of this country because post this election, that is what we are really, really focused on is recovery. And so as these announcements keep rolling out, even the child care announcement for $10 a day that was in our last budget, uh, we've uh, reached agreements with about eight provinces now. We're hoping Ontario is going to be the next in line to agree to sign that province. That is done also not... Um, just because, you know, not with one interest only in mind. Of course, we want children to prosper. We want them to get good early learning uh, child care. However, we also want to see women and families return back to the workforce. And we know from uh, studies that have been done, statistics, statistics from Quebec and uh, also other countries that have good child care programs in place, they have more women in the workforce as a result. Their GDP does go up and that's something we're very much interested in. We want to give all families the opportunity uh, to be able to, you know, reach their dreams. Um, and I know many women in, in my position uh, that you know studied alongside me at one point or another but they've had to put their careers on hold and they just can't envision going back to work if it's going to cost them an arm and a leg uh, to put their children through childcare. so i think that was is really going to be key beautiful yeah. i love all that um well as we are all too aware this election is occurring during the covid pandemic how have liberals tackled covid so far and how will they continue to tackle it if your party gets re-elected ruby 
Yeah, well, you've seen so far that uh, we are a government that has been compassionate and vigilant throughout COVID-19. We have been compassionate because we've been there for our small businesses. We've been there to provide support to individuals, but we've also been vigilant and planning ahead by making sure that we had more vaccines procured than any other country um, compared to any other country that doesn't have didn't have at least one point vaccine manufacturing in their own country. Um, we're, you know, leaps and bounds ahead of others in terms of our vaccination rates in our country. And so I would like to also thank the Canadian people. Of course, we're generally a very um, science-based country and people have a lot of faith in Health Canada and, and their doctors and healthcare systems. So I want to thank them for stepping up and getting vaccinated, uh, but also to our ministers and our government that worked tirelessly to make sure that all the equipment that was needed, um, the refrigeration, the the actual vaccines themselves, they we were able to get them into this country and now we have more than, uh, than what we even need and we're trying to give back to other countries that also need to, um, to vaccinate their citizens because we know this is a global problem and, and we won't solve it alone. So uh, I would say, you know, our pandemic response has been, you know, right on. And uh, in the years to come, what we're looking to do is make sure that we support businesses now so that they can bring workers back. You heard an announcement a few days ago of uh, extending the the hiring program that's going to go until March. The hiring program is focused on providing businesses the support they need to bring employees back to work and hire new ones. Uh, that really is going to be our goal going forward. Great. Great. And uh, speaking of the pandemic, how can voters expect their voting day experience to be this year as compared to pre-pandemic uh, elections? Well, Elections Canada has ensured us that they are going to be able to run a safe election. Advanced voting from October 10th to the 13th, that's four days, four days of advanced voting, uh, more days than we've seen before. And we also have the mail-in ballot option. You can go to electionscanada.ca and request a mail-in ballot and just place it back in the mail. Um, you have to do it uh, within the timelines that they require. So please get on that right now if that's how you wish to vote. Um, and, and Elections Canada is going to be putting out a lot of that information to every household that has a voter so that you're well informed uh, about how you can get out there. I, I believe they're going to have disposable pencils, I've read, um, distancing, uh, masks are going to be mandatory uh, when you go to vote. So they're going to make sure that all the precautions are taken so that people are safe. Okay. Okay. Do you have any you predictions have about the outcome of the 2021 federal election? Well, of course, we wouldn't be in this if uh, we didn't, uh, you know, hope that we would return with a strong majority so that we can deliver on our platform promises. Uh, platform is, you know, in the coming days going to be completely revealed and we want Canadians to, you know, exercise their civic right and go to the polls and let us know what they are looking for in this up you know in the upcoming recovery this is really um, a question that is being put forward put forth to canadians so that we have a clear vision of what canadians expect of us and so that we can clearly deliver on the things that are expected there are three main priorities within the Liberal Party's platform. More money for middle class families, real action to address the climate crisis and stronger gun control. Can you tell us about these, Ruby? Yeah. Um gun control I can definitely tell you about and in my riding that's an issue that comes up quite a bit we have been victim to a lot of gun violence in the Brampton and Peel area um, a couple of summers ago we you know it was on the news day after day uh, and so I talk to people they want guns off our streets they don't see a need for any of uh, these assault rifles, which we have already put in place legislation to ban assault rifles. We're going to continue to monitor our borders with more investments. Uh, we have strengthened our CBSA, but I think there is more to do so that we make sure that guns are, that are smuggled into this country are caught um, and the people are punished. Uh, appropriately and um, and we're going to continue to work well on that uh, more than that municipalities and regions that want to work with the federal government to completely ban guns in their area we're we're willing to step up uh, and to do that as well and and just on the topic of guns
people. What do you think about education in terms of firearms for the citizens? Is it just a straight ban that you guys are going for, that your party is going for? Or are you interested at all in setting up infrastructure for education and knowledge about it? Well, there, there are training facilities in order to get, I know that our requirements are already quite stringent to get uh, a gun in this country. Mm -hmm. And so of course there are um, the training that happens. Uh, I know there are a lot of responsible gun owners in this country, however, what does end up happening is that guns are stolen, um, guns get into the wrong hands, guns are smuggled into the border. There are many, many different ways uh, where guns end up be becoming uh, used in the in the purpose of a, of a crime. And, and that's what we're really focused on is making sure that there is less circulation of guns at the end of the day. So, you know, the more guns we can reduce and get out of our country, I think the better Canada will be for it. Uh, guns essentially are something that end up hurting other human beings. And so it is my, my strong belief that the less guns we have, the better. Why did your party leader, Justin Trudeau, call for an early election? I, I don't believe this to be necessarily an early election. Um, if you go back into history, every minority parliament or government that we've had uh, generally will uh, dissolve within 18 months. We're well over the 18 month period. So Canadians know in minority governments, um, the government does not tend to last the full four terms. Uh, and also, you know, it's really important that we give that opportunity to Canadians at this very crucial time um, during the pandemic. There were supports and immediate action that our government needed to take. We worked tirelessly the last two years to be able to provide those supports to people. Mm -hmm. um, but now, you know, we have a very new type of um, government to run. We have a new mandate that we would like. We want to focus on the recovery and uh, in our platform of 2019, we did not envision a pandemic such as the one we just had. So we want to put that new platform forward to Canadians. We want them to exercise their their civic right and uh, let us know clearly what they want to see in the upcoming years uh, for their future. Great. And why should the people of Brampton North vote for you? Well, I, I hope the people of Brampton North have had the opportunity to meet me. Um, however, if they have not had the opportunity to meet me yet, uh, I want to say that you know I'm always available. Reach out to me in my office. I would love to meet anyone with any issues or concern. Democracy really is a two-way street. Uh, I try to get out there as much as possible. I try to do as many interviews as possible so that you can hear from me, you can see me, you can get to know me. Um, but I also want to see and get to know you as well. So please don't hesitate to reach out. So if Brampton North wants a very accessible, compassionate, caring member of parliament, I hope that on September 20th, they will go uh, to the election polls and uh, cast their ballot um, with their conscience and vote for the person they think that can deliver that and uh, vote for the party that has a very clear vision for Canada. Nice answer. Nice. And uh, just on a last note, more broadly, why should Canadians vote Liberal? The Liberal Party has been there through thick and thin, uh, stand, you know, side by side with Canadians throughout this pandemic. I, I think you know uh, from what we have been able to deliver in the last year and a half that we're really focused and really want to concentrate our efforts to making lives more affordable for people, making um, making sure that people have the opportunities they need to succeed. The party has always been about making sure that there's a balance uh, when it comes to running this country. So I feel uh, that Canadians should take a really close look at our platform and uh, take a look at all of the initiatives that we are going to be putting forward for the environment, for the economy, for jobs, for youth, for seniors, um, basically so that Canada continues to be uh, the best country in the world. Thank you again for joining us and wishing you best of luck with your campaign. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Ava, for having me on. Yeah, anytime. I'm Ava Blackwell and you're watching Inc. TV. Remember to subscribe, like, and turn on the bell notifications.